This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast to contain spoilers, but we can't imagine you care if you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers. There's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Banshees of Inisherin. From Martin McDonough is about a longtime friendship that is abruptly severed. Set on a remote island during the Irish Civil War, Banshees sees a small community of lonely individuals grow increasingly desperate to seek what they can't live without. It's up for nine Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Director, Martin McDonough, Best Actor, Colin Farrell, Best Supporting Actor, Brendan Gleeson, Best Supporting Actor, Barry Keoghan, Best Supporting Actress, Kerry Condon, Best Original Screenplay, Martin McDonough, Best Original Score, and Best Film Editing. It is a 96 on Rotten Tomatoes with a runtime of one hour and 49 minutes. This is my favorite movie of 2022. Fucking honks. Favorite, possibly, among my favorite movies ever can't pick this apart not that we're really picking movies apart on here anyway can only celebrate this movie for being perfect yeah. perfect story perfect performances perfectly directed perfect editing like everything from top to in the more you watch it you're like there's a there's a hundred more things each time you see it it looks like it's a black and white movie that's been colorized yeah there's nothing to pick apart there's zero fat on it mm -hmm. I think that the themes are extremely strong uh, we can probably get into those in a little bit but like the acting performances there are four major roles in this movie all of them are knocked ten thousand miles out of the park there is there is almost nothing to criticize this movie on do you agree and this was the hardest synopsis to write. Do you agree that it's about people becoming desperate for meaning. that thing? Yeah, it's desperate for fulfillment, meaning. It's like the struggle with loneliness, the struggle with like existentialism, mm -hmm. the struggle to find something that keeps you going and gives your life purpose. And in this movie, two close friends find entirely different things to give their life purpose and give them meaning to get out of bed in the morning. This doesn't have a super high audience score on it's Rotten Tomatoes. To I think it's a 75 and certain demographics like this movie more than others. This is depressed people, uh, right? Like <laughs> depressed people, young people. I, I, I think a, a lot of guys are thrilled that there is a guys feelings movie. Guys being dudes it, in their feelings. Truly. And they all they're all seeking that thing and in calm's case it's a legacy mm -hmm. but in parg's case it's Personal it's relationships it, I, I think it's just like humanity like he like he's as upset that that calm might not be a nice person as he is at being yeah, abandoned as a friend. But it's it, it's a, it's a form of personal relationships. Like that's his friend. That's a guy who he, has meaning to him and like kind of keeps him going. But to find out that like that guy is just not nice to him anymore kills him. If I'm a professor, I'm giving you like a B plus on it and you're saying like on like, the right track, right? Like, like great exclamation point, keep going. And you're like, it was a, a two page paper. I wrote I, two pages. I get, get out of here. I get what you're saying. Like it's, 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 it maybe reflects like him losing a little bit of faith in humanity, right? That, like, like his like, best I friend would just you, be like, never mind. Like, this is what I thought you were. Yeah. Like it sucks that you left me. And obviously he is very lonely as evidenced by his relationship with, his donkey, which is just fucking beautiful. It is. But until it's I not. mean, that scene in the bar, and we were talking before we record this of like we have to discuss what is Colin Farrell's uh the what clip. is his like clip that is shown. So if you don't know, if you're new, uh we talk about the clip, which is when you're at the Oscars. They play the clip when they talk about your movie and they talk about your performance if you're if you're up for best actor. So for Colin, Colin Farrell, what's the clip? In my mind, it's the pub scene where he talks to where he confronts Colm and he's like, uh, "You're not you're not nice." And uh, he talks about like how his parents were nice, like they didn't leave much of a legacy. Colm says like, yeah, "Yeah, like nobody remembers your parents or whatever," and he's like. I remember them. I everybody here remembers. They remember how nice they were. Yeah, that, who's I think, gonna, I think who's that's like the most your, emotional scene. And who's gonna remember you and Siobhan? Nobody. Mm -hmm. Brutal. Uh, so I agree. Same scene, but I think it's going to be later, where it's the you used to be nice, mm -hmm. or maybe you never were. And then he turns back and he says, "Oh God, maybe you never used to be." That is. 
I mean, that's that hurts him more than it hurts Calm. Of course. And then he yeah. walks out and Calm says a smart aleck thing of like, oh, if only he could always be like, he says like, oh, it's a shame. Yeah, that's the uh, most interesting he's ever been. Which, man, I got to, we're going to go longer on this one. Colin Farrell deserves flowers that he's not going to get. He's not going to win Best Actor. He did win Best Actor at the Golden Globes, but it was for musical or comedy and none of his fellow Oscar nominees were in that category because for some reason Elvis was a drama according to the Golden Globes which is really weird but Austin Butler won that and Austin Butler is favored to win this over him even though the front runner for this is Brennan Fraser for the whale uh this movie to me pulls off one of the hardest things that can ever be done which is be exceptional in both being a black comedy in the sense of of uh, being hilarious, but also being utterly depressing and devastating at the same time. And that is so tough to pull off. So like the experience of watching this movie is like, I got halfway through this movie and I had said to myself, and I think that I texted you at the time, like, it does not matter what happens in the second half of this movie. This is already a five out of five. I'm having the best time watching this. It's, it's enjoy- like I said, no fat on it. You get right, in t- right into the thick of things, and it never lets up. The bar scene between – the bar scene, the, the heavy drunk scene, it's, it's also funny. Where mm-hmm. it has the, uh, everybody knows who Mozart is. Well, I don't, so there goes that theory. <laughs> as if to be like, see, dummy <laughs> – Colin, gotcha. Colin Farrell, though, the the Parag character, terrified the whole time that he might be really stupid and that he's dull. The dinner scene where Dominic is there and he's saying like, oh, like it's not very fun over here. And Siobhan says, oh, well, you go back to your house. I hear it's a fucking barrel of laughs. <laughs> and Dominic says, touche. And Parag says, to what? And he says, oh, it's touche. It's a thing the French say. And the look that comes over Siobhan's face because she knows, like, he's going to realize, like, there's something that Dominic knew. And Dominic is the the village <laughs> the dumbest idiot. person alive, yeah. Man, e- everybody in this movie, though, has a scene like that. Obviously, Dominic's clip is There Goes That Dream, which even in that scene also, again, like, it's a sad scene, but it's also funny in the beginning yeah. where he says, don't skip ahead, mm-hmm. where she's, where he's like, since we have so much in common, we don't have anything in common, don't skip ahead, <laughs> and then he asks, he very half-assed asks her to marry him, which is really tough. I'll tell you what, Brendan Gleeson's best scene in this movie, I don't think is with one of the fellas, I think it's with Siobhan, where she comes over, gives her clip, the, mm-hmm. you're boring, you're all feckin' boring, and then later, she says, are you depressed? Or, I think you might be ill, and he says, you know, sometimes I think that I'm just entertaining myself while I wait for the inevitable. Do you ever think that, Siobhan? She looks at him and she says, no. And he looks back and he says, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. That man, like everybody in this movie is so fucking good. And Brendan Gleeson's not going to win. Barry Keoghan's not going to win because the best supporting actor is spoken for with Ki Hui Kwan. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I would give it to Ki Hui Kwan over those guys. Best supporting actress is the one I hope for. Carrie Condon gave, I think, the best performance of the year. Mm -hmm. And she lost at the SAG Awards. This movie got shut out at the SAG Awards, went 0 for 5, and really, I mean, of the categories for which it's nominated, its best chances are at original screenplay, where it's favored to win, best picture, and best supporting actress. The one that I most wanted to win, as I said, is best supporting actress, but I do wonder if this is going to be one of those movies, and it's got a ton of nominations, that gets a bunch of nominations and doesn't really win anything. Well, here's my prediction. Uh, You said uh, on the Everything Everywhere All at Once that you made the declaration this is going to win Best Picture. My my proclamation is that this movie is going to win Best Picture, and I think that it's it has an opportunity to be one of those movies where uh, throughout the course of the night at the Oscars, you start to see... Like the things line up for it to win Best Picture. I I think that that could be the case. I think that this movie is going to win Best Picture. I would be ecstatic with that. I'd be really happy if Everything Everywhere All at Once won. This is a year where there's a bunch that are deserving. But I think that 
the like when Parasite, when the tide shifted, was when Bong Joon Ho won Best Director. There's no way this is winning Best Director. No, I don't think so. But like you, could not have... in a year with a movie as crazy as Everything Everywhere All at Once. Not with like Steven Spielberg just lurking around. It could win Best Screenplay. It it will win Best yeah, Screenplay. Right. That's so like I... the only one I think it's going to win. Unfortunately, I I'm praying for Carrie Condon and she, Angela Bassett is great. Was great. I can't remember if I've said this yet, but she's the Glenn Close of this year where she's awesome and she deserves to win an Oscar, but wasn't the best in her category this year. I think that Carrie Condon, like I said, gave the best performance of any category this year. She has a cr- stole, crazy declaration. But she, but I mean, I, not I, everyone's going to agree with that, but she was the best person in this movie out that she was the best of the best supporting actress noms. No movie ended with me thinking like, holy fuck, this person, the way I felt when this movie ended with Carrie Condon. I think that she plays the most important role in this movie. Like, I yeah. think that this movie doesn't work nearly as well if she doesn't give an incredible performance and kind of link the two guys and play that sort of mediator role in that that sort of like the adult in the room. You know, and, and so like I'm definitely on your, in your corner and on your team and rooting for her to win. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know if I agree that like it's like the one, the one like most powerful. And her category, her category gets really interesting now because the SAG Awards, Jamie Lee Curtis fucking won. That's which crazy. It, it's, it has seemed like, all right, is it going to be Carrie Condon or is it going to be Angela Bassett? And I think everybody the whole way has assumed Angela Bassett would win because she's in a legend. She's in a big blockbuster movie and she was great in it. So just that's like a do the job and you, sh- you should win mm-hmm. unless some motherfucker comes and does some crazy shit. And I was just deeply moved by Carrie Condon in this, in this movie. I would give it to her. This is the only porn movie nominated for best picture because it's uh, it's sweater porn. God damn. <laughs> the clothes in this look amazing. I mean, everything in this looks amazing. Like, the scenery in this movie is just out of this world. There's there's nothing to criticize this movie about. Like, it's just, it, it crushes it across the board. Is there a favorite article of clothing you have from this movie? Not to put you on the spot. Uh, Dominic's got some great looks. He's got that hat. There's a lot of dudes wearing like sweaters under sweaters, <laughs> like just like stacking sweaters. There would be, I, I think uh, Dominic does like a big collared sweater under one of his sweaters, just flapping that collar down. There's a lot of options. And I mean, Calm looking great too with those vests. Man, they got the lapels on them. I've seen this movie a couple times. <laughs> yeah, man. What? Do, do you have a favorite? I don't know. You know what my favorite is? What? Siobhan's jacket, that like red, like I long do, coat. I do remember the long, the the long red coat, and it's got such like a nineteen twenties living on an Irish island feel, where they're wearing the same stuff a lot. Yeah, like the the fashion in this is great, but they're not giving you the impression that they all got like stacks and stacks and stacks of clothes. Yeah, um, I have seen a few people say like, "Hey, this movie's about nothing." which Ooh. bothers the hell out of me. Because, I have a tough time picking what this is about. Yeah, like I said, it, there are, are several themes that are very strong in this movie. I mean, the most obvious one, and it throws it right in your face, the Civil War. Like, they have a Civil War on the island, and then they talk about the Civil War that's going on across on the mainland. It's like, that is, that's such a good theme, because, like, in, in Sharon is, like, very uh very separated very isolated mm-hmm. um seems like stuck in the past kind of and uh i don't know how you miss that and clearly the the theme of like isolation and loneliness is just it's what the entire movie is about so if you're a person that says this movie is about nothing figure it out one of the great lines of this film of course comes from dominic just when after they're drinking after they're at the pub they're out in the water drinking, and Parig says, did you hear the explosions this morning? And Dominic very confidently says, that'll be the war then. <laughs> and he says, yeah. Just an incredible character. But, man, 
I'm in love with this movie. It's the best.